What's going on internet? IG here again today. Now, I've been wanting to do a Q&A style video for some time now, but for whatever reason, haven't really gotten around to it. So this is going to be my best attempt at a Q&A video, kind of. I'm gonna answer some of the most popular questions that I get on my channel and on various uh, social media outlets. And I'm also gonna dive into one of those in particular because it's by far the most popular question that I get. So let's first of all start out with a couple of basic ones. How long has Infinitely Galactic been around for? The channel started in December of 2010, and I think my first video review that I ever did was OpenSUSE 11.3. You'll have to go and take a look. I'm pretty sure it was the GNOME edition, but we're gonna come and circle back around to that in a minute. So what do I do for the rest of my time when you don't see me on YouTube? Well, I'm working. I work in events management and also technology retail, and also with youth and young adults. I'm quite a busy person, hence my one video a week schedule is sometimes buffeted around a bit. But there you go, that's what I do when I'm not YouTubing. I'm 22 years of age and I've been doing this YouTube thing for about four years now. Okay, so what do I run and what gadgets do I have? Obviously, I'm a Linux guy, so I like running Linux on my computers. But I have an Android phone in the Sony Xperia Z. I have an iPad that runs iOS, obviously. I have a notebook which runs Generally speaking, Ubuntu slash Windows 8.1 slash whatever I might be playing around with at the time. I also have a Mac Mini that I use for multimedia production in a more professional sense. I also have a Dell Inspiron desktop that I use for testing out stuff and that runs Windows 7 in a more enterprise environment. I'm running a lot of different stuff. And I guess it's a typical world that we live in now where you have to figure out a way to make all of your devices and computer experiences connect somehow. So all the services that I often rely upon, like Dropbox, Spotify, Google services, they're all things that I can access on all of those platforms. It doesn't really matter uh, what I'm using at the time. Having said that, since I started this channel in 2010, I found myself using a lot of other services in conjunction with you know, my primary Linux distributions and stuff like that. So now to the most popular question that I always get on my channel, that is, what do you use as your primary Linux distribution? And that question is a very valid question, especially coming from people that watch my reviews about Linux distributions. They want to know what I actually value in a Linux distribution, considering that most of the reviews that I do I try and bring out the positive details in those different distributions. And if I don't like the distribution, then chances are I'm not going to review it. So at the end of the day, for the last about two years, I've been using mostly Ubuntu, the long-term support releases, as my go-to daily driver operating system. When I'm using my notebook, which is my sort of workhorse, uh, that is what I'm using most of the time. The rest of the time, I'm using Windows 7 at my workplace, I'm using OS 10 on my multimedia production side of things, and I'm constantly switching in and through those different operating systems. Now, having said that, it's kind of time things are changing in the Linux world, in that when I started this channel back in 2010, there are a lot of dist different distributions and they all aim to do different things. And while that's still the case, I kind of feel like the distinguishing factors between different distributions uh, it really boils down to quite shallow stuff nowadays. Yes, you can get different distributions that give you different forms of up-to-date software or more stability or more speed, but at the end of the day, you can almost achieve any of those things in those different camps. You can be running bleeding edge software still with Ubuntu. You just use the, you just use factory unstable. Yes, you can get a stable arch based or more arch based install by using Manjaro or Manjaro. Yes, you can use Fedora or yes, you can use CentOS if you want a really stable Red Hat distribution. There seems to be so much crossover now that it's getting difficult to look at Linux distributions and really dig out what is new. Now, on top of that, Linux distributions have also not really innovated that much uh, in the last year and a half, two years. Uh, a lot of the hardware, uh, a lot of the hardware compatibility now is pretty amazing. You can put in any distribution and it'll pick up most of your hardware out of the box. I guess what I'm saying is it's getting harder and harder for me as a Linux reviewer to look at a distribution and see what elements uh, are good about it or different about it, especially when you've just got so many distributions out there that are all doing really cool things but they're all kind of traveling in the same direction and that is becoming more user friendly and more consumer focused. Also, the other reason that I started doing Linux reviews was to learn more about the Linux 
ecosystem. Now I kind of feel like I'm at a point where I've plateaued a bit and so I feel like I've got a relatively good grasp on most things related to Linux but I want to be able to learn more and that's where my primary distribution question comes back around. So I've been running Ubuntu LTS releases for the reasons of stability, good software compatibility and the, the look and feel is largely keyboard driven which is what I really like in an operating system. But here's the thing, I want to be able to learn more about Linux and challenge myself a little bit with what with the way that I'm working. So I'm experimenting with a shift to OpenSUSE. OpenSUSE as a distribution is very much based on the SUSE Linux Enterprise version that they do have. It's kind of like the community driven version of that and they put out a release relatively regularly every eight months and then every three releases they have what they call an evergreen release which is kind of like their long term support release. I guess the things that I really like about OpenSUSE and you can see those same things in the OpenSUSE 11.3 review that I did right when this channel started, I'll put a link in the description below if you want to check that out and see how far we've gone, was the fact that it felt like a complete operating system. It felt like it had all the tools, all the infrastructure and all of the extras that uh, the distributions like Linux Mint or Ubuntu or the smaller players didn't have. Uh, it had a ro very robust tool management set, it had a very diverse software ecosystem, it had fantastic documentation, it had a very professional website, uh, like all of the manuals and stuff that you could get with it and for it were all really detailed and it really felt like it was a, it was a complete robust operating system that happened to be running based on Linux. And so I guess that's where I'm at at the moment. I want to shift my focus away from just being comfortable plodding along in Ubuntu land because it is that easy um, to using something that's a bit more robust, using something that has, while it might not have as many user-friendly features there, I'll have to work to get it to the point where I'm happy with it. Also, I kind of feel a little bit more different, not just using the classic Ubuntu and, uh, and also not jumping on the Manjaro hype wagon either. Not knocking either of those distributions because they're both fantastic in their own right. But for the sake of trying something a little bit different, we're going to stick with OpenSUSE for the next, let's say, month. And then I'm going to get back to you all with a bit of an update video as to how that's all going. But there are a few requirements that it's going to need to meet. It's going to, be, it's going to have to integrate with online accounts and emails from all of these different organizations and places that I'm working in and through. It's going to have to be able to manage digital photo libraries, my massive music library, my iPod, my YouTubing and video editing habits. Not to mention it's gonna to have to manage a pretty big library of various media types, both with tagging, organization and filtering. And if it can pull all this off with relative speed and consistency, then I might just stick around. At the moment, I'm starting with GNOME because I haven't played around with it for very long. Then again, I might be a bit starved of options, so I might end up switching to the KDE, but I'm gonna let you guys know if that happens. So for the most part, I'd like to experiment and dedicate most of the videos for the next couple of weeks anyway, to OpenSUSE and my journey through that. As I feel like that's going to give the Linux community and specifically the Linux community that watches and participates and, and comments on my videos, uh, a bit more substance than just looking at yet another Linux distribution and reviewing it and seeing what parts I like about it. Because I feel like they're always gonna be there. And it's time for me to look at something a little bit different and try and go in a bit deeper with that something different. So thank you all for watching this video. I know it's been a really long convoluted video and I hope you've gotten something out of it. As always, leave me questions and comments in the comment section below or on Facebook, Twitter, or Google+, and I will try and get back to you when I can, fitting it in and around, obviously, with all that other stuff that I mentioned earlier. But yes, there will be OpenSUSE videos coming, and it will be based on OpenSUSE 13.1, and we will see how this whole crazy thing works. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you next time. Peace out, ladies and gentlemen.